Don your armor and prepare your weapons as we are getting ready to delve into these 21 and a half kilogram of cardboard. But without further ado, let's get these boxes opened. So here we have the big box, 12.2 kilograms. So let's see. A lot of protection and a very big box indeed. I was not expecting such a big box and it is kind of a strange fit also. This says here that this is a sleeve box but uh, let's put all of this aside, get everything out of this box and then we take a look in more detail afterwards. The Tome of Creatures and a lot of expansions. So here we have Ice expansion, Venom expansion, Feather expansion, the Mount Havoc expansion, the Nightmare expansion here as well, and the Serene box. So oh, here we have the small box which is 9.3 kilograms and let's see what we have inside of this. Okay so first of all we have the neoprene playing mats. I will just get all of this content out and then we'll go over it in detail on the table to get over the content of the other box. So this seems to be the core box, the core game, and I'm wondering if that's the only thing we have in here. It sure is. I'm just gonna get this up and get everything on the table and then we'll start to take a look. So here we have all the content from the big boxes. So we have the core game, the neoprene playmat, the art book as a ring box, five expansions and one big sleeve box. But let's get into a closer look of each of these boxes, starting off with the core game. So here we have the base game, as you can see, is a very sleek box, only says Primal Awakening. We have the big boss monster here and a small hero. And if we look at the back, we can just turn it around here. Then we can see it says here, Nature on Thuria has always been indomitable and ferocious. Since the arrival on the island, mankind has taken refuge behind the walls of the fortified city. Only hunters like you are able to travel beyond the board of Alboria in search of resources and answers to the island's secrets. It is 1 to 4 players, 30 minutes per player per scenario, age 14 and up. So, first off, we have a monster tray here. Let's see. These are probably taped, yes. That tray was very well taped together. But let's see, so the base seems a bit thin, but the monsters look amazing. I have no idea what these monsters are. There is quite some big gaps here, unfortunately, if you really want to paint them up. But nothing that you can't fill out with a bit of plastic glue or putty. We have another lizard style. Type monster here. Very nice detail on the back spikes. We have what looks like a dragon head, but with these wings, spiked wings here. Crystals coming out of its body everywhere. A big hammerhead style thing here. It's hard to see the mouth, but there's actually a mouth inside here. We have this guy here with some what looks like big stone tusks, kind of a lion. We have this big beetle. Again, most of these skulls are actually really, really nice and detailed. We have the hunters, we're gonna take them in a moment. We have this dragon bat like thing here. Again, all the spikes on the back. And pretty good details, a bit of gaps there at the legs. 
we have this mean guy who really really many details in the scales and a lot of these spikes as well also really love the head and then of course what i would think is the big belly from the box art so this is quite a big miniature as you can probably see compared to my hands not as detailed at least on the front but very detailed everywhere else the wing over here has quite a big gap though but i really love the sculpts and also the bases that the bases are detailed as well then for the actual playable characters the hunters so here we have a guy here with a hammer these are really detailed and really sculpted nicely sculpted and there's also no gaps at all it seems like they are molded in one piece we have a bow under here people are probably gonna see the similarities to monster hunter but this is a completely different game here we have a sword and board style character and of course the classical great sword really really nice miniatures but that was the first miniature tray here then underneath here we have a lot of cardboard and cards but let's just take the small miniature tray for now it is probably also taped to get the, yeah it is so another four monsters and we have this again lizard so i think a lot of scales a lot of details love the rocket base as well we have what looks like a giant crap really love this one very bulky and a lot of details especially in the corals on the shell we have this nine-tailed wolf i would think it is seems like the fur is gonna look pretty decently shaded as well and then we have this beast here again nice details could be a bit more on the stomach please but or maybe but the overall very nice scops all the way through and of course when you are playing a boss battle these are the main thing they have to look awesome on the table then we have what looks to be the playing board let's see if we can get this open so first off here we have a small map with the different locations and this is probably the different type of monsters that live there so poison feather fire earth ice maybe don't know what the rest of these would be crystal but uh, i would think this is to track your campaign and then of course we have the battle board this two side battle board here with the four different locations and the turn tracker and the other side here is this jungle like setting then we have the actual player boards for the different weapon types. So here we have Darion the Great Sword. On the back here we have a very nice full art picture as well as a description of that character. We have Mira the Great Bow, Thorak the Hammer, Lorna the Sword and Shield. Really love that they have these full art drawings and then we have the monsters so we have Myraxon, Kaja, Toramat, Digorax that's the one we saw last here we have Cole one that's the crab like creature or Roxon that's the one with all the arms with the bubbles the crystal wolf is Philaxia we have this Godzilla like lizard that is Mokras. We have the beetle that is Osif. We have Chikoros, Chikoros, Hurum, Taragua, and of course the Awakened one that we had on the front of the box as well. And then we have what looks like a generic mat of some sort here. But yeah, all the bus or all the monster boards and player boards. Then we have the rule book. That's, that's, or do we have two rule books? So we have the rule book and we have 
the campaign book. So first off here the rule book. It is a big boy of, let's see if we can see here, 118 pages. So the table of content here, we have the prologue, the campaign rules, expedition rules, edition rules, and a glossary. And if we look through here, it seems to have decent examples, nice colors, splash around, good full image examples here of how to set up, how to play, what the different cards do, how to track your campaign mode, and examples of how to set up the different monsters. Nice indeed. And then of course we have the campaign book. I'm not gonna go too far into that, but it has here the map, the campaign chapters, quest scenarios, and really nice pictures as well with the text that you have to read as you progress through the game. Then we have some campaign sheets here to track your quest, which monsters you have defeated, the level that you are in herbalism. These are one-sided. And we have another one for your player characters, what skills you have unlocked, the materials that you've picked up and different notes. Both of these are decent thickness. And then we have what I would think is the forge cards, to use the term for Monster Hunter World, which are what materials you need to forge different new upgrades. So see here we have Herbalism level 1 and it says what you need. We have Herbalism level 2 and they are double sided but it contains the same on each side and level 3. We have the Fire Forge, the Horn Forge, Crystal Forge, Coal Forge, so that was the one with the new, Thunder Forge, Missile Forge, and of course we have level 1, 2, 3. So these are reference cards to what you are able to forge as you progress. We have a few layers of cardboard here. So first off we have some of the terrain tiles. We have some different, I would think these are different tiles to show different conditions. We have some more terrain tiles down here more terrain tiles. We have some different tokens that is used to track during the game. More tokens, different effects, and these are probably the modifiers and damage tokens. Some more conditional tokens it seems like, and a lot more damage tokens. Then we have some plastic bags for reorganizing everything. And we have what looks like equipment dividers. A small envelope that says do not open. Dividers for what I think is the different characters and monsters probably. Yeah, it is. so this is to allow you to organize everything nicely down inside of this box again afterwards. I really do love the way that it is organized at the moment. There is not a lot of room that is not used, to be honest, so maybe too much space around the miniatures, but uh, let's see when everything is put back in the box. I really also hope there is a place to put all your expansions in here. So we have these small cards here. See, we have some different backgrounds here. So these seems to be scenario or quest cards. I'm not going to look into these. These are probably some behavior decks. Yeah, so I think these are the monster behavior decks actually. Then we have the player action cards or weapon cards that are used in gameplay. So here we have the great sword. And I can't remember the rules, but these are how many cards you should have of the specific colors in your deck. We have the upgraded weapons of all the different types and the different levels. Then comes the bow, the hammer, and the sword and shield. And then some special weapons apparently. And a player reference card for each of the weapon types. So here you can see the special abilities for the great sword player. It is a quite interesting card size that they have. You see it almost seems like the same size as Betrayal at the House of the Haunted Hill style. Then up here in the next tray, if I can get this, this is also taped around. We have some more cards, so let's see. 
So these are the specific monster behavior decks that shows different information on which parts of the board is being attacked and what stands. I'm not gonna go through these because that is part of the game learning the monster. These are oh so these are the attack cards. So the weapon cards over here is just a reference card on how to combine the deck and your special ability. And these are the actual cards that you then have to add in the different colors. So let's see some examples. We actually see the different colors here on the top. So here we have uh, the great sword. We have some orange card, some blue cards, red cards, and yellow cards, and green cards as well. And we have some different of these. Then we have for the bow. Okay, a lot of these for the hammer. No sword and board, so we probably also have another stack of these cards. That is some more monster cards, not gonna open those. Some more monster cards and the rest of the player cards. A lot of cards, especially if you are the type that wants to sleep everything. Then we have some very small rectangle cards. That's interesting. That is the different items, it seems, the different equipment. So we have different armors, all the different type of armor that you can unlock, coral, crystal, lightning, etc. So helms, so these are helms and armor. A lot of cards, they are a bit thin when you start handling them, honestly. Potions and special items, I'm not gonna open too much, that's some of these are probably unlockables. We have more potions, what seems to be unique items, and the rest of the armor and helm cards. So that's everything in the core box, let's go over to the expansions. So first of the expansion we have the Mount Havoc expansion, and if we just take a look at the back here, it doesn't really say anything other than you need the core game, but uh, let's take a look inside. So we have a small folder here. It says the Mount Havoc expansion. It has a small quote and it shows us what we have. So we have a lot of stuff in here. We have two new hunters. Apparently we have the Heliron and Kara. And all the different cards to them, so the weapon cards, the attack cards, the different tokens. And it seems like we have some new rules as well. Yes, so one is the heavy gun. And we have some new campaign chapters. The other one is dual blades. So this is what they also call the fifth player expansion, as this allows you to actually play an additional hunter. And the game is, if I remember correctly, balanced around five, not six, even though we have two more here. Again, very nice character arts. We have the new tokens, some additional damage tokens that is brought to accompany need that you now have more characters, as well as some of these special tokens that was needed. We have a lot of upgraded flame boards which now have the two new weapons as well. So I would think these are just a copy of all the Forge boards from the main game, but with additional weapons added. We have some more character sheets from Mount Havoc. That is, I don't know if there's a difference between these and the others, but I can see that these have some other monsters at least. We have two new miniatures down here. So here we have the heavy gun, nice. and here we have the dual blades. Again, very nice player sculpts. Here we have all the different weapon cards for the starting weapon as well as the upgrade cards and the player reference cards, just like we saw in the core game. We have all the new armors and unique items for these characters and mount havoc as well as all the player attack cards. But yeah, that was everything in this expansion, so let's go over to the monster expansions. So first off in the monster expansions we have the feather expansion, and just like with the other one, we don't really have anything on the back. So I'm not gonna keep 
showing off the bags we just go directly into opening the boxes. So here we can have a small booklet just like the mount Havoc Rex F2. So first here we have one that is the filler expansion that shows you we have two new monsters as well as the monster board, the behavior cards and of course new weapon and equipment cards that you can create with parts from these monsters as well as some additional force cards for those. I think the rest of it is probably special rules and setup of the new monsters. Yeah. So what we have here is Parsis and Nagajas. Then we have the campaign book for some additional scenarios for these monsters. We have the three special Feta Force board level 1, 2 and 3 which have the four primary weapons but not the expansion, the weapons that we saw before, so these might also be in Mount Havoc, I would think. Then we have the boards for Parsis and Nagajas. We have some additional terrain tokens. We have the new weapon cards that you can create for parts of these weapons. And below here we have the different components, so all of these are of course taped. So here we have the behavior cards for the monsters. We have some additional quest cards and we have the new equipment that you can create with the monster parts. And in the other compartment we have the miniatures. So first up here we have passes. If I can get this, this up. Very nice detail here on the wings like, uh, what is it called? Peacock, I think it's the name. Very nice indeed, really love the sculpt. And on the other side we have Nagajas, again, these are very tight snugs. I don't know how to get this off other than probably cutting it off. We'll do that later, but it looks like a Chinese dragon of sorts. Yeah. But yeah, there was everything in this expansion box. I would expect the rest of the expansions to be almost the same concept, but just different monsters. But uh, let's take a look, we still have three more to go. So next up we have the ice expansion. Again we have this small book here explaining the expansion. We have two additional monsters and as before all the new cards needed to craft and to play the monsters. We have a small campaign book for those two monsters as well. We have upgraded forge cards but only for the four primary weapons. We have the monster player boards here for Sirkai and Mamorak. We have some new ice tokens. We have the weapon cards here for the upgraded weapons. And again, we have the behavior card decks, the new equipment and new quest cards. And then we have the miniatures. And let's just be honest, what people really want to see is these miniatures. So first off here we have Sirkai. That's, a, that's an interesting scope. A lot of gaps here, unfortunately. Not the most interesting monster in my opinion. A more interesting this one. So this one I actually like. Mamorak. Again, it doesn't... It, it isn't gonna damage it to get some filling in these gaps, but I really like the look of this monster. But yeah, that was the ice expansion. Next up we have the Venom expansion, really love this picture here. Again, we have a small booklet containing the different components and rules for the two new monsters and the new gear. We have a campaign book here, the Myth of Ouroboros. We have forge cards for the new equipment that you can forge for the four primary weapons. And we have the boards here for the two new monsters. So we have Haida and Raikel. These look really, really awesome. Looking forward to see the miniatures of these. New poisonous terrain tiles. The weapon cards, as well as the monster behavior cards, new equipment cards and quest cards. And then we have the miniatures. First off, we have this plant-like beast here. So this has some really nice detail actually. I love that it's standing up against this tree stump. 
and then we have this big poisonous worm here. So it, I must admit that it seems a bit flat when you are looking at it here, but at least the face is decently detailed. But yeah, another expansion, this was the Venom expansion. So last of the monster expansions, we have the Nightmare expansion. So just like with the expansions before, we first have a small booklet here describing the monster. And again, we have two monsters, or it seems like it is one monster in two different combinations. We have, now as I see, we have three new monsters in this expansion. We have the different cards, we have new weapons, we have new pearl cards. Uh, yeah. Then we have a campaign book as well, Nightmare Unleashed, that has some additional scenarios to be playing through for the Nightmare expansion. And then we have the monster boards here. So we have Taraska, Sekhath, Sekalif, so this is the same monster in different configurations, and Sergeros. Then we have some new tokens and a lot of cards. So these are the monster behavior cards, monster behavior cards, and monster behavior cards, as well as some new material cards, quest cards, and a few special items. So interesting thing about this expansion is we actually don't have any force cards or any new weapon cards and stuff like that. So it could seem like that these are just new monsters to hunt, but no new gear to actually craft, which is interesting. And here we have the miniatures, so I would think this is Taraska. This very spiked kind of turtle, it looks like almost like a snap turtle. Then we have Certurus, this kind of T-Rex inspired dinosaur. And last but not least, we have this double function miniature here for the two last monsters. Looks, looks interesting. But yeah, what seems to be kind of a different type of expansion. I don't know how it works when there's no new weapons, if this is like a new in-game special boss encounters. But um, we're gonna find out when we start playing the game. So next up we're going into the accessories, starting with the terrain box. And here we can see on the back that we actually have the different kind of terrain. So two plateaus, six rock, four brush, three of these plant things, two of these, two of these, and two of these as well. But let's take a look. And these are, of course, instead of the cardboard terrain tokens that we saw in the base game. It is interesting that we don't have any 3D variants of the ones for the expansion, like the ice, the icy fields and stuff like that. And yeah, here we have the different terrain miniatures. So here we have these big bushes. These are actually very, very detailed, very nice. We have four of these, we have two of these plants. Let's see if I can get the focus here. Also very, very detailed. Same goes for the other plants here. And these are, well, these is a bit plain. They could have used some some more depth probably. We have the plateaus here that your hero can stand on. These are hollow, don't wait anything. We have the rock crop formations here, pretty basic, again hollow. And then we have the, have the last plant, so I do really think that all the different plant terrain is looking awesome. And the rest is a bit so and so. But that's all for the terrain box. Then we actually have the biggest of the boxes. This is almost as big as the base game, and it just says that this is a sleeves box. So let's see. Doesn't say anything on the back, it just has this awesome picture. So I'm wondering if this contains sleeves or if this is to store everything when it is sleeved. Let's open it up. Oh, so it is both actually. So it contains all the required sleeves, including these special card size here. That is very nice. Don't have to go out and, and find these. And as you can see, we have a lot of sleeve packs for all the cards in the game. I don't know if there's also for the expansion, but at least for the core game. And then there's also for storage of all the different cards, including 
locations for the divider so this is really gonna be a big step up compared to get everything into a single box and make it easier to set up when you're playing next up we have the neoprene mat and this is just a neoprene version of the double-sided mat that you have in cardboard version inside the core game last but not least we have the tome of creatures this book which i would think is an art book let's see so we have seen a big increase in art books being included in big projects and this seems to be just the same as we have seen with Heroes of Mind, Magic 3, Beast, Shattered Island, etc. So let's see here. Yes, these are indeed all the different art from the game, the different monsters, a description of the different locations, some very, very nice full page art of the different monsters. And yes, these are two pages of all the different monsters in full color as well as a description of each of the individual locations on the map and these also includes all the monsters from the nightmare pack and the other expansion we have a section here of the different herbs and plants growing as well as some designer drawings from the game we have the different weapons, armor, items very, very nicely put out here with all the different renderations of the different levels of weapons as well. And at, at the end we have the full color art of the different hunters just like we have on the back of the character boards. Very nice book. There we have it. That was all the content of the two big card boxes, 21 and a half kilogram of awesomeness for this epic boss battler game. As always, if you have any comments, please write them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please consider giving us a like and subscribe. It is really helping out the channel and it is highly appreciated. But that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.